Let's have a look at equivalent resistance. Let's say we've got a network of resistors. So let's say this is our network of resistors. We connect it across a battery of voltage V. Then there's going to be a certain current that flows out of the battery and into the network. Now, if we've got an equivalent resistance, we could replace that network by a single resistor called the equivalent resistance such that the current coming out of the battery would be exactly the same. That's what's meant by an equivalent resistance. Equivalent resistance in series is very, very simple. So in series, of course, the current has to go through each resistor. There's no splitting of the current. We could replace those three resistors or three blockages to current by a single equivalent resistance. In this case, it would be 35 ohms. It would just be the sum of the individual resistors 25 and 10. So in series, our formula for equivalent resistance is simply add up those individual resistors. In parallel, it's a little more complicated. Now, this is a parallel circuit, but try to remember that being as this is a continuous piece of wire, we could have drawn this circuit like so. This is the same circuit. So what happens is the current comes along and then it splits up. So it's got two paths to go down. An easy analogy that works for understanding what's going to happen is to think of two, if you have two roads, let's say we've got a town right here and we've got another town right here. If we've got two roads to go down, there should, it should be twice as easy for traffic to flow. In other words, our equivalent resistance should be half as much. If we have two equivalent highways or two equivalent paths, it should be twice as easy for current to flow. And that means our resistance should be half as much. It should be 60 ohms divided by 2, or 30 ohms. So we could replace these two resistors by a single 30 ohm resistor and work out what the current's going to be through that resistor. And it's not any harder if you've got three equivalent paths. Of course, it should be. 60 divided by 3. It should be three times as easy for the current to flow if there's three paths for the current to go down. Okay. But this only works when we have equivalent resistances. So we have equivalent paths. Now let's look at another extreme and that's where we've got a really small resistor and a really big resistor. One compared to a thousand in this case. Now the 1 ohm resistor, that's kind of like a super highway because it's really easy for the current to go down a 1 ohm resistor path. But this 1000 ohm resistor, it's like a dirt road. Not much traffic can go down it at all. In fact, the dirt road isn't going to help the traffic out much at all. Basically, all the traffic is going to go down the super highway. And that means the equivalent resistance will be approximately 1 ohm but just a little bit less, maybe 0.99 ohms, because a few cars, a bit of the current, a small trickle of current can go down the 1,000 ohm path. Let's see if we can make an estimate for this second circuit here, where we've got a 500 ohm resistor, a 20 ohm resistor, and a 10 ohm resistor. And the first thing I'd like you to do is make a guess. Do you think that the equivalent resistance will be less than 10 ohms? Or will it be between 10 and 20 ohms? Or will it be between 20 and 500 ohms? Or will it be greater than 500 ohms? Maybe stop the video now, try that question, and then come back for the answer. And the answer is that it should be less than 10 ohms. And the reason for that is that these other paths are always going to make it, it's like adding extra roads. When you've got extra paths to go down, 
extra roads to go down, it always makes traffic flow better. And so it's always easier for the current to move. So the equivalent resistance has to be less than 10 ohms because the 20 ohm and 500 ohm paths are going to help the current flow a little bit. The actual formula for the equivalent resistance in parallel is going to be R equivalent equals 1 over R1 plus 1 over R2 and then you'd continue in that pattern. So let's use the formula now. What would be the equivalent resistance of these three resistors in parallel? Okay, hopefully you made this calculation. R1 over R equivalent is going to equal 1 over 3 plus 1 over 4 plus 1 over 5. And uh, so this will be what? 20 over 60 plus 15 over 60 plus 12 over 60. You should get 1 over R equivalent is equal to 47 over 60, which means that R equivalent will be the reciprocal of that, 60 over 47. And that comes out to be 1.28 ohms. So once again, you want to notice that the equivalent resistance, when you've got resistors in series, is always less than the smallest resistor. Less than 3 ohms in this case. These two formulas for equivalent resistance are very easy to prove. We're just going to do it for the case of uh, two resistors. We'll start with the parallel case. So let me draw a parallel circuit. So there's my R1, there's my R2, they're going to join, come back to the battery. So I'm going to pick out those two points. This is my battery voltage V. I've got a current coming through here. The current splits up into I1 and I2, so I has to equal the sum of I1 and I2. Now, I'm going to write that in terms of voltages and resistances. So my current here well, my current has to be equal to the, the, by the definition of equivalent resistance, has to equal to that battery voltage divided by the equivalent resistance. I1 would be equal to the voltage across R1, but the voltage across R1 is simply V. So I1 has to be equal to V over R1 by Ohm's law. And I2, I2 the second resistor also gets the battery voltage across it and it has resistance R2 so then I can divide both sides by V and I get 1 over R equivalent equals 1 over R1 plus 1 over R2. Now similarly in series my circuit would look something like this so I've got a V I've got an R1 and an R2 and of course I'm going to get a delta V1 and the delta V2, the voltage across R1 and R2. And of course, by conservation of energy, V has to equal delta V1 plus delta V2. Then we can use Ohm's law. We know it's the same current this time through the entire circuit, and therefore this has to equal I times R1, and this has to equal I times R2. And by the definition of equivalent resistance, that V has to equal I times the equivalent resistance. Now I can cancel out all the I's, and I get my formula for equivalent resistance in series. R equivalent is equal to R1 plus R2. Now if we have a network of resistors, we can proceed step by step looking for places where two resistors or three resistors are directly in parallel or directly in series. So for instance, in this network here, these two four ohm resistors are directly in parallel. So we can replace a four and four in parallel, they're equivalent, so we just divide by two and that becomes two ohms. Now the two and the three are directly in series, so we can replace two that are directly in series by the equivalent resistance and they're in series, so that'll be 5 ohms. And now we have two equivalent parallel resistors, so once again we just divide by 2, and we get a grand total resistance for that circuit of 2.5 ohms. 
what I'd like you to do is the exact same procedure for this network of resistors. Pause the video, work it out, and come back for the answer. Here's another example. Pause the video, try to work it, work it out, and then come back for the answer. Okay, this one is very easy if you see the pattern, not so easy if you don't see the pattern. Now, the current comes along here and it splits up here. So these two are directly in series, and they can be replaced by a 2 ohm resistor. So then we'd have two 2 ohm resistors in parallel which would be 1 ohm. Now this one here can be quite complicated unless you work from this end inwards because if we do that then this piece here is the same as this here and we know the equivalent resistance of that is 1 ohm. So in other words we can replace all of that by a 1 ohm resistor. And then what we have is the same pattern again. You notice that this here is exactly this 2 1 1 pattern again. So our equivalent resistance was 1 ohm. Now you might be able to guess on the third one that it's going to come out to be 1 ohm, but you should probably go through the, the process of figuring out that that is 1 ohm, then you've got the same you've got the same setup here, then you'll get the same setup here, and then you'll get the same setup here. So it'll all work out to 1 ohm. You can try to work this one out in the same way. So pause the video, try to work it out, and then come back for the answer. Okay, so if you start out here, those three, 9 plus 6 plus 3, that's going to be an 18 ohm resistor. And you've got an 18 and a 5 in parallel. That should give you uh, 3.91 ohms, which would be right here. Then you can add those three up, 8, 10, 13.9. So that you get a 13.9 and a 4 in parallel, which should give you 3.11 ohm. That you could replace all this by, so there would be a 3.11. Then you've got those three in series, that would be 10, 11.11. So the equivalent resistance here should come out to be 11.1 ohm. And one last one, once again, I'd like you to pause the video, try to work it out, and then come back for the answer. Okay, so the 49 and the 51 should come out to be 100 ohms here. 37 and a 45 together will be 20.3, that's in parallel. So you end up with a 20.3 and a 75, which is going to give you 95.3 for the equivalent resistance of that branch. Then you'll have a 95.3 and a 100 in parallel. And if you add those up in parallel, you should get that this entire piece here would be worth 48 ohms, 48 ohms and 80 ohms, so that your final equivalent resistance should come out to be 128 ohms. 
And that's all for today, folks. Thank you very much.